Next we're going to take a look at some of the mana XL in the deck. Um, this deck doesn't really need a ton of mana XL because the golems are so cheap, but something like Solring, for example, uh, belongs in any deck. It's definitely the, the best play you can make on your first turn for any deck. Coalition Relic is good because it'll give you access to an extra 2 mana if you use the charge counter. And the fact that it gives you colored mana is great because a lot of the golems in this deck contain 2 red mana and we run a lot of colorless sources. So that's a good choice. This last one here, Aether Vial, sort of a de facto mana accelerant. Um, cool thing about this thing is that a lot of our golems are cheap, for example, so you know it, it'll curve up pretty nicely. But the other thing to note is that when you're putting golems into play from your hand, just like with the uh, Wizard, Lackey, and Warren Instigator, they can't be countered. And that's pretty important. So a lot of your key pieces are going to get put directly into play without the blue player having a chance to stop you. Next we're going to take a look at the mana base. Uh, we're playing a two color deck and they're friendly colors, so that's useful. We're going to have access to a ton of dual lands. And because we're not too afraid of colorless mana, we're going to have access to a ton of uh, non-basic lands, utility lands as well. So I'll take you through these. So we'll start with the dual lands. Uh, in friendly colors, you always have access to a ton of these. And you're always going to want to start with the Alpha Dual Land and the Ravnica Shock Land. And the reason these are so good is because they actually have basic land subtypes. They're both swamps and mountains. And that's good because when you play a fetch land, you'll be able to get uh, fetch them up. So we're playing Bloodstained Mire and a couple off-color ones, Arid Mesa and Verdant Catacombs. So those will always be able to grab these and give you access to both of your colors. And then we've got a whole bunch of other dual lands up here. Got your Tribal Land, Man Land, uh, Pain Land, Filter Land, Tainted Land. Uh, basically, we're mostly going to play the ones that don't come into play tapped. You know, you could play a bunch more, but uh, the ones that work on the first turn is uh, what we're going for most of the time. Next, we've got some Utility Lands that also tap for colored mana. Cycle Lands are always good because you can uh, turn them into something else if you're getting too many lands. Urborg, this thing pretty much belongs in any black deck, helps fix your mana. Uh, the only real drawback is that it's legendary. Bajuka Bog, uh, probably one of the best common lands you can play. Graveyard Hate is necessary in any deck because it's such a popular theme to uh, use graveyard shenanigans. So something like this will let you hate someone's graveyard uh, at the cost of a land drop. So it's pretty, pretty good. And then Spine Rock Knoll. Um, you know, dealing 7 damage in one turn with this deck, oddly enough, is not hard at all. So the ability to sneak something into play at instant speed is uh, pretty useful. So this is definitely uh, fits the deck's theme. And next, the rest of our utility lands. Uh, you're not going to want to run too many lands at top for colorless. Uh, it's definitely tempting to run as many non-basics as you can. But, you know, at the end of the day, you need to make colored mana. So keep these to a minimum. Only runs the ones that are worth it. Uh, these first two, Strip Mine and Dust Bowl, it's important to be able to blow up your opponent's lands. Sometimes it's just to cut the mana off, but usually someone has some really powerful lands on the board, and sometimes it's important to be able to kill those. Mutavolts, uh goes in any tribal deck, of course. It can turn into a goblin, so that's great. Goblin Burrows, another card that helps us with our aggro strategy. Um, these two here are awesome. Ancient Tomb, Temple of the False God, they're basically acceleration in a land. Uh, so they're they're definitely worth playing. The drawback in Ancient Tomb, of course, is usually negligible in a deck like this where you're racing your opponent and they're the ones who are taking too much damage, not you. High Market Phyrexian Tower. Uh, these belong in any deck which use graveyard shenanigans because usually you want a free way to sacrifice your own creature and these are two convenient ways to do that. And sometimes the extra abilities actually come in handy. It's nice to be able to excel yourself with Phyrexian Tower if you really need to. So like I mentioned earlier, this deck has access to a number of combos. This first one is a 4 card combo. Uh, first you need any goblin in play. Uh, we're going to go with Scree for example. And then you play Lightning Crafter, championing the goblin. Next you need to make sure you have Kiki Jiki in play, as well as any free creature sack outlet. So Demir House card or Skirk Prospector. And how the combo works is you tap Kiki Jiki make a copy of Lightning Crafter. Lightning Crafter comes into play, the copy, champions Kiki Jiki, and because the token has haste, tap it, deal 3 damage to a player, 
and then you sacrifice the token to your free sack outlet. He dies. Kikijiki returns to play untapped. So then you're able to repeat this combo as many times as you want. Kill a player. In the process, make infinite mana. Why not? And this combo is actually surprisingly easy to pull off. Sure, it's a four card combo, but remember you're playing black, so you have access to a ton of single target tutors, as well as these tricky guys here, Mod Catcher, Repeatable Tutor, so you can tutor up the uh, combo pieces pretty easily. The Goblin Recruiter, Goblin Ringleader combo will let you get, you know, all your all the combo pieces in one, in one swoop, and you can set that up and get it down the next turn if you want. And Patriarch's Bidding, for example, if a bunch of the pieces are already in your graveyard, then you can surprise your opponent, bring them all back in one turn, and end the game pretty easily. Okay, so now I'm going to explain another infinite combo this deck has access to. It involves Kiki Jiki again and Necrotic Ooze. You need Kiki Jiki in the graveyard, and the Ooze has to be in play. And then he'll have the ability to tap and make a, co a copy of himself. Now the Necrotic Ooze also has the abilities of Kiki Jiki in the graveyard, so he can tap, make a copy of himself. And this will give you access to infinite Necrotic Ooze tokens. Um, however, the drawback of this, of course, is that those tokens die at the end of turn, but there's a way around this. If you pull this off during your opponent's end step, because it says, the errata on Kiki Jiki says at the beginning of the next end step, these will actually remain in play until the end of your turn, so you will have a chance to attack with these infinite necrotic ooze tokens while they still have a chance to attack. So this is a pretty easy two card combo to pull off, um, kill everyone on the board. So I just talked about the infinite combos in the deck, but really the deck doesn't rely on going infinite all the time. It has access to a bunch of neat little synergies that make the deck work. Uh, squee, Skull Clamp, Warren and Skater, Goblin Matron, uh, Goblin Recruiter, Goblin Ringleader, Buried Life, Patriarch Spitting, Cauldron Dance, Goblin Pyromancer. These are just some examples of some neat little synergies you can put together, and they, they're what really make the deck tick. So now I'm going to show you what an ideal playthrough of this deck looks like. Uh, ideally on your first turn, you'd like to hit one of these cards, Soul Ring, Ether Vial, Goblin Lackey, or maybe Warren and Skater on your second turn. And these are great because right from the get-go, you're going to start playing ahead of the curve and establishing a board presence. And if you don't get one in your opening hand, it's nice to be able to tutor for one of those. Next, you want something like Goblin War Chief or Goblin Chieftain to give all your guys haste. And haste is great because it'll make your aggressive spells like Goblin Piledriver, Siege Gang Commander, it'll make them a lot more dangerous because your opponents won't be able to react, react to them and it'll uh, let you do a lot more damage. Later in the game you're basically going to do your best to get Kiki Jiki into play because he is uh, integral to the aggro win or to the combo win. The good news is that we have access to a ton of Goblin Tutors so it's pretty pretty easy to assume that Kiki Jiki will make an appearance in almost every single game you play. Uh, the cool thing is that once Kiki Jiki is in play, he can make more copies of these Goblin Tutors and help you assemble one of these combos. So, the Lightning Crafter combo actually happens a lot. This ends a lot of games and it's one of the main win conditions. The Necrotic Ooze combo obviously happens a lot too. Um, however, you can always win with an aggro strategy. Something like Goblin Pyromancer will pull that off. And something like Patriarch Spitting will give you resiliency to make sure that you can always put all these pieces back together um, if they get swept. And Wart, the general, basically works in the same way. If Kiki Jiki dies or Pyromancer is in the graveyard, uh, you can bring these back and start all over again and start assembling your aggro blitz strategy or start putting the combo pieces together again. So that's what makes this deck uh, resilient and having two main win conditions is uh, very good to be able to rely on those. So that's the end of my video on Wart. I hope you learned something, hope you got some ideas for your for your deck, and I hope you realize why this is one of the most unique decks in Commander. Uh, it plays like, unlike any other deck I've ever seen, being able to combo or execute a successful Blitz strategy in the same game. It's a pretty, pretty neat deck, very dynamic, very challenging to play, and uh, it'll always catch people off guard because no one ever expects it to be as good as it is. So hopefully you'll give it a try, and uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thanks.